Hey Tribe! So, uh, not all of you might know that for more than a decade I was a deeply devoted person to spirituality. Uh, kind of all different practices from Indian Advaita Vedanta, the non-dualistic teachings, to Tibetan Buddhism, uh, Dzogchen, and uh, obviously Zen Buddhism, the Japanese traditions, and also the Westerner teachers like Eckhart Tolle, Andrew Cohen, uh, Gangaji, like I, I, I was listening to and reading about everyone. And, and obviously there's a story about that. And also too, obviously I did also practice a lot. And throughout those years, I also actually even thought about that. I was an instructor of meditation for a while, a kind of a spiritual teacher myself, believe it or not. And it was a wild and interesting journey. And uh, through all of it, uh, oh well, since I am naming stuff, uh, there were also significant moments where uh, I was learning about spirituality when I went to India and I lived in, you could say, a spiritual school for a few years in Switzerland. So again, it was a wild uh, journey and full of a lot of discoveries and insights. But the thing is, uh, I went through various stages. You could say the first stage was the stage of recognizing that um, I don't have a clue what enlightenment is because all of those teachings pretty much were all about enlightenment. So initially I had, I, I came to, initially I thought I kind of have an idea of what enlightenment is. Then I moved on to the stage of having no clue what enlightenment is. Uh, then I went to the stage of figuring out what it means. And, and of course it may sound like a controversial subject or, or idea, but as I will share with you through this story, I actually did figure out in my belief what enlightenment, what, what people refer to as enlightenment, like in a legit way. And after you hear the story, maybe you can decide whether it's an accurate uh, kind of thought or not. Uh, but eventually I went to the next stage of realizing that there is that thing which you could call enlightenment. Like I see what people are talking about, even like spiritual gurus. I I am pretty certain I know exactly what they're talking about. And I will even explain it a little bit in scientific terms, believe it or not. But in the end, it's there is something to it. Like there is something that happens, like there is something legit about it, but a lot of it is also bull crap. And in this video, I am looking forward to share with you a bit of a bit about my wild journey through the pathways of enlightenment and spirituality. And uh, I might not go as deep into the whole spiritual topic. Maybe I will, but uh, maybe that deserves another video, a different video, but we'll primarily focus on what the heck is enlightenment and why I personally think you shouldn't really give that much thought about it. Like it's not, you shouldn't be as hyped as spiritual people are about the subject of enlightenment. So all about that in this episode of The Journey. So as you can see, my doggo, the Grinch, that's his name, or in Lithuanian it's Grinch. He fell asleep, hopefully you didn't fall asleep from my intro, it was a bit long-winded as usual, I guess. But yeah, let's get to the topic and let's get going. So uh, one of the first stories that uh, I'm interested to share with you is, well, first of all, I, I was always inspired to make a difference. I was always inspired to inspire people and, and I always wanted to, have a, to live a significant life which would have a positive impact on other people. And long story short, that led me to become an Aikido instructor or, or to choose, um, to want to become an Aikido instructor. And after high school, I moved to Switzerland initially for three months and then for two and a half years to study with an Aikido instructor who was also a yoga instructor, meditation instructor, and turns out he was a spiritual guy. So you could say spiritual guru. I think he, he wouldn't mind if you would call him that. Uh, and he had a long background. He traveled the whole world, lived in Japan, spent years in India, met with some of the most 
famous uh, spiritual teachers alive back in the day and some of them are still alive like Papaji and he was a direct student of Andrew Cohen if you know those names if you don't don't fuck him don't 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 worry about them so so he he was uh, very knowledgeable at what he did and uh, I became his student and devoted to uh, live at his school and uh, and study there all the time to until I would become an Aikido instructor. And obviously, meditation, I was always interested in meditation. I used to, in my teens, as I was searching for answers, uh, I would meet priests and monks, and, and, uh, and I spent some time with Buddhists, and, and I would keep asking them questions. And, and I, I was always interested in med meditation. I felt like there's something to it that, that will actually benefit me. And, and funny enough, the first time I think I caught up to meditation, I caught on to meditation was when I was watching a episode of Dragon Ball. If you don't know, it's it's funny that that's that way anyway, but but there's a moment where he's taught meditation, the young Sun Goku, and I was like, oh, there's something to it. And I think I was like 10, 11, next 12 years old, and uh, probably around 10. And, and that's when I first tried out meditation. And I liked it, and then I start. I initially I meditated by my own, and then I, I learned some meditations through the people I met and uh, from books and internet, which was still developing back day. Imagine that. Uh, but yeah, and eventually I met my Aikido instructor, and uh, he, as I said, was a very spiritual guy, kind of modern too, contemporary as well. Like he had his own way and approach. But uh, in one of our meetings. Uh, first meetings, we would have like a weekly meeting where we would sit down and talk about life, and he would he would push his students to pursue their goals, which was actually a good good, good part of the teaching. And one of the times we he started talking to me about enlightenment, like if I know what that is, and it was interesting because as he was talking about it, uh, and I was like what 19 years old, straight out of high school, didn't have much life experience, but he was talking to me about enlightenment, and I realized he. He, he didn't say that out loud, but I realized that he considers himself to be enlightened. That he not only knows what enlightenment is, he has experienced enlightenment. And that was kind of an awkward moment because beforehand I thought that enlightenment means that you become perfect. And that's a big misunderstanding. I think that's a universal misunderstanding which hopefully has evolved and it's not there anymore. Back in the day it was definitely there. It's an immature understanding or per perception about, uh, belief about enlightenment, probably from the days of Siddhartha Gautama, the Buddha, initial Buddha, who got enlightened and people see him as perfect and that's why they think, oh, so as soon as you become enlightened, you're perfect. And, and that's not the case on any level. Enlight enlightenment is not about that. But, uh, but then back in the day, I thought that, especially as, you know, as a young adult, having little experience and little knowledge, and I thought, in the back of my mind, I didn't say that to him, but I was like, you think you're enlightened? And also I had that also stereotype like, oh, only Indians can be enlightened or only Japanese can be enlightened or whatever. Uh, and then back in my mind, I was like, okay, that's kind of weird. I was still open-minded, but that was, that kind of caught me off guard. And I was I think like, does this guy think he's enlightened? Okay, that's kind of interesting. But you know, as we moved on in our relationship, I developed a huge amount of respect for him and and I started, I listened more and more about enlightenment and, and he kind of directed me to the direction of that, mm, if I remember correctly, there, there was kind of that notion that if you, unless you become enlightened, you can't really be a great human being capable of achieving, creating great uh, change in the world. And that's, that's bullshit. I mean, there's so many people who would never consider themselves enlightened or, or wouldn't be enlightened by the standards of enlightenment, but you know, they, they change the world. And uh, including some of entrepreneurs and you know, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, the first two names that come to my mind. And again, argument, if you would say what they changed, but you know, you can name anyone and Martin Luther King, you know, was he enlightened? I don't think that was the point. Uh, so that was kind of a faulty idea but I think that that was kind of the, the idea I got from him that I need to learn, if, if I really want to create major impact, I need to learn and understand what enlightenment is and, and, and become enlightened, and then I will be like a super human being, super useful. And my value to the world will increase. And that's when I went wild, you know, I, I, I went nuts. I, I'm, I'm kind of that person, I'm like 100% or nothing. 
and I completely devoted myself to the pers to pursuing what enlightenment is. I read all the books, I meditated all the time, I kept asking him questions and, and asked him for challenges and did the challenges and and also like all the practices that were there in the school that I learned. Uh, by the way, I'm checking if the audio is recording. Last video, it it bailed on me. So. Uh, so I'll do that some once in a while, but just uh, I won't say anything about it. So yeah, so so the whole three years I studied there was a lot about a lot of that was about enlightenment, a lot of conversations we had and practices. So I was all into it. And interesting enough, again, like keep your pants on. Uh, let me let listen to the whole story until the end before you make jump to assumptions and and think whether this is bullcrap or not. But one day, through the practices with, with my instructor, he, I, I, I got it. I was like, something clicked in me. And it's a long story again, I don't wanna, I don't, I think, I don't think it's as valuable as the main story that I'm guiding you through right now uh, of you know, what that means, what that whole thing means, but, but that there's a huge question of like who you are, who am I? the main question in spirituality in most of spiritual traditions. And when you realize who you are, and the idea is basically theoretically, it's like you realize you are not your body. But theoretically, if you understand it theoretically, it's like it's, there's not much to it. Like if you think you understand it, that, that was one of the stages I mentioned to you. Initially I thought um, enlightenment is about being perfect, and then I wasn't sure what enlightenment is, but then I realized, okay, it's about not thinking you're the body, but not thinking you're the body is not the same. The thing is you have to, you, you, that moment when it clicks with you and that click is like universally described about in all pretty much spirituality, when, when a person becomes quote unquote enlightened, that click happens, that, that deep, clear realization that you're not the body, kind of, it's a sense of where your mind opens and, and I think a lot of people had kind of that glimpse to it and I'll talk about it more in scientific terms, like what that really is or what I figured out it is. But that thing, it clicks with you and you have that kind of mind expansion experience, similar to drugs, but you, you're not on drugs. And then you, you don't associate yourself as the body. And if you have like a spiritual teacher or, or you're smart enough yourself, he points, that, he points that finger at that subject, which my instructor did. And then you realize deeply like, oh shoot, that's true, I'm not the body. You know, I'm like, like you, you, you get the direct experience of realizing you're part of the whole, or you're not even the whole, you are the whole, you don't exist. Like all that stuff, which spiritual books tell you about, in that moment, I got it. And it was really interesting because kind of my mind did shift, my mind switched, and from then on, it took me a while to kind of localize myself again and, and get in, into a rhythm of life. But uh, from then on, uh, when I read spiritual books beforehand, I read them and I thought I understand them, but, but it was all an, an idea. I wasn't sure, I, I had to guess. But after that click moment, I, I just like, all the spiritual books became so clear, so and I was like, oh, I know what these guys are talking about. It's like, I know, I know it. I've tasted that apple. And so it was a really interesting experience and it did change me to some degrees. But now the thing is, that's the other side of the thing which I want to get to. Uh, and uh, the thing is, I lived like that for a while, you know, like uh, believing that I achieved enlightenment. And, 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 but I started to also see like, okay, enlightenment is not what I thought. It's that understanding. But the idea is that in enlightenment, you lose your ego. Your ego dissolves because you realize Kind of the theory is like that. Uh, if you don't have that click and don't think it's so awesome, it's not as awesome as, as I think people make it. But let's, let's just talk about it in, in, in a neutral way as best as I can. So until you have that click, the individual, the world is all about you. It's all about you. It's like you are the center of your world. And even if you're altru altruistic, you're the center of the world. It's the ego is quote unquote big. But when you have the click moment, you you realize, you have a clear realization that you are not the body, your, your ego is just a construct, and then you have a chance to kind of dim, dim down your, uh, your ego and not be self-centered and, and with that realization kind of become a servant of the world. 
Now the thing is, I think to a degree it has that effect, but I spend enough time with the whole spiritual scene to also start seeing the other side of the picture. And that was, your ego doesn't disappear. It kind of gets into a different shape. And I think you can work hard to keep it low. But then also too, especially if you're like a guru, if you're a spiritual teacher, people love you, people will worship you. People are like, you know, especially in that culture, it's so guru focused. And it's so easy to develop that sense of, you know, I'm the enlightened guy. Even if you don't see it, even if it's subtle, and not everyone that I met had it. I mentioned to you, I went to India, I met some spiritual monks, spiritual teachers who were officially enlightened. I met some Westerners who were officially enlightened, recognized as enlightened human beings. And some of them were humble, you know, and everything, but they were still human. They still had the same crap. And, and some, some part of me is like, I respect them on a huge level, especially some of them like who devoted themselves to extreme levels of ser servitude, like some of the monks I met in India actually Westerners, but also to some of the monks and spiritual teachers I met in India were just, they actually were douchebags. You know, they were self-centered in a spiritual way. And actually I will make a video and talk to tell you a story about a specific encounter with a well-known spiritual teacher that I had, which is actually a very interesting story, but it's for another day. But he was self-centered. He was like playing the, the spiritual guy, the spiritual dude. You know, he was playing the role but then he was still human. You know, he, I could see, especially now when I look back, he still had the same flaws that everyone else. It's just an idea that after you become enlightened, all of that disappears. And uh, when I started realizing that enlightenment is not what people make you think about that it is, I started, my, my eyes started to open up and I, I developed more critical thinking, especially for my martial arts journey. And I started to look back and, and look at the details and I started to see a lot of shit in the world of spirituality and enlightenment. As I said, I'll probably make a different video about the bullshit of spirituality itself, but, but in terms of specifically focusing on enlightenment, like one of the, probably one of the most famous enlightened Westerners, dudes, is Andrew Cohen. He was the, also he created this famous magazine called Enlightenment Next. Uh, but yeah, so he was very famous, had a huge following until eventually, but also he, turns out he was very abusive. Apparently he was disrespectful towards women and he was just a douche. He was like, he was like, you're, you're either with him or you're with no one. And I, I noticed that pattern in a lot of spiritual schools and teachings where it's, even if it's subtle, they don't say it, but sometimes you can feel it's, it's us and it's them. And eventually what, what happened to Andrew Cohen he was all about how the ego dissolves with enlightenment and yada, yada, yada. But uh, eventually his top students wrote a book about him where they also asked uh, a psychologist or psychotherapist, I think, for help. And they identified, they, they shared a lot of dark stories about him, like what a douche he was. And also... Um, they, the psycho, psychotherapist, I guess, professional pointed out that actually he credited some like narcissism and, and whatnot, like specific diagnoses where that, 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 that guy, Andrew Cohen was, was, he was a bit of a mental, mental guy. And that was like a deeply respected, huge following spiritual guy, officially recognized as enlightened. So, so he, thought he dissolved his ego, but his ego was just on a different level. There's also a story, actually my keto instructor, um, he told me that he once met one of the well-known spiritual teachers in India. And there's a specific moment where she was really giving, apparent, based on him, she was giving awesome spiritual teachings. And, and uh, by the end of that, somebody asked, somebody mentioned that they have a teen, a teenage girl, who's like really, uh, what's the right word? She's really like a rebel and she's not following the rules and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And um, they asked her like, what's your advice? And she suggested them to put her in the, like in a psychiatry clinic. Because that shows that if you get what enlightenment is, 
if you have that quick moment, your part of your mind shifts and you get a realization that some people haven't yet had, you could say, but that's it. It doesn't make you that much of a better or smarter person. Not at least in my experience. It's still, in the end, it's still all about the individual and who you are and how you are. Personally, for me, I always wanted to serve people. I always wanted to, 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 to do good to the world before I had that click and after I had that click. It did help me somewhat, but like not that much. Like most of the work I did was beyond that with myself. The crap I had, the crap I keep working with, you know, we could call it ego stuff and whatnot. That stuff, that stuff is like, enlightenment doesn't take care of that or that click moment. It's, it's, it's all about just working with yourself constantly and never letting yourself off the hook. Always realizing you'll never be perfect and you always have to be vigilant because there's always, you're always going to slip and there's, there's you know, nasty stuff we take culturally and we're all human beings and we have our limitations and you always have to be mindful of what you do and, and you always have to, again, work with yourself. And I think the dark side of that whole movement of enlightenment is because to some people, the idea that they became enlightened or that click moment makes them think that that, that, that was it. Well, now they can go wild and now they know the truth and, and that covers everything. And that's kind of similar to martial arts. If you practice martial arts, it's that phenomenon when you have a black belt in a martial art, some, sometimes it gets into people's heads and they think now they're a black belt at everything, which is nonsense. No, you're only good at, you're only a black belt at throwing or breaking people's bones and stuff. Nothing else. Doesn't make you a better husband, doesn't make you a better business guy, all those skills have to be trained separately. And same with the notion of enlightenment. That's as much as it does. And some people spend decades to become enlightened. So, last part of the video, I think. I mentioned to you I will break down the scientific part behind it, which I eventually kind of caught on to, just by accident, actually. So, a couple of years ago when I was living in the States, um, I became fascinated about, by a book uh, called The Rise of Superman. And I'm not enthusiastic about the name, I keep saying that. I think it's a funny name, it's a fun name, but also I think it just doesn't, does, doesn't do the justice to the book, but the book is incredible. In short, it's about the state of flow, which is like an actual scientific state where your mind goes into a peak performance. It's kind of like being in the zone but it's all scientifically you know, measured and everything. It's, it's that capacity of human beings to, uh, to, to turn, to switch on, to switch on uh, where the brain becomes super focused and your whole body, it's like, you're, you're, it's like a super focused state where you're actually like in a peak state where, where you, you are much more capable than any time before or after. And you can repeat that, but anyway, long story short. Uh, Scientifically, this guy went through the journey, the, 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 book, the writer of the book, he went through the journey to learn what that is. And it's all science-based, which is awesome. And turns out, and he wasn't even talking about enlightenment, but I just realized that's the same shit. Was, um, he, um, he, he turns out for the, for the use of science, when you're in that flow state, in that peak performance state, your mind, the mind, there's a, apparently there's a brain part which helps you realize where you are, localize yourself as an individual. And it's kind of the, the, the self-centeredness aspect where without, if, if, it's, if, if that part is dead, let's say, and that could be a mental psycho, psychological issue, if that part is dead, you... Uh, then you can go mad because you don't realize that you're here. That's your body and and suddenly you're, like there's no Tool to localize yourself and to identify yourself as a separate human being that part is specifically Responsible for that and in the flow state Which is a feeling of a kind of mental uh, Consciousness kind of expanded consciousness 
an expanded consciousness state, which, see, I talked about that. And uh, when you're in the flow state, that part uh, for temporarily turns off. It doesn't function, which means in the flow state, which is almost like a, the, the guy proves that it's almost like a survival state, that, that when your, your whole system, your whole organism realizes you need to have peak performance, and often people have that experience. It's not limited, otherwise you wouldn't, wouldn't have that enlightened moment besides that, but it's often in the moments of life or death when the flow state happens, and because your whole system turns on to do this one thing. And through meditation, you can achieve that too. And, but that's it. It's only that. What I'm trying to say to you is that in the state of flow, or in the state where people think they became enlightened, temporarily, it's the same state. Temporarily, their brain shuts down, the part of the brain which localized themselves shuts down, and you feel limitless. You feel like, I am the universe. I am nothing. I'm not my body because that part is off. That's all there is to it, in my understanding. And I'm pretty sure I, I have a pretty certain belief that I'm right, especially because I was in that world of the crazy belief of spirituality, and and I went through that whole journey, and I met people who were on it, and now I can look back at it through this having this knowledge. I think that's all there is to it. And as, yes, as I mentioned, you can utilize that to kind of dim down your ego for a bit, but that doesn't solve all your problems. That doesn't make you a saint. To be honest, it doesn't make you that special either. In the end, your long-term performance and how you are good as a human being, I think that's what makes you special. Not that one moment where, oh, you saw into something that most people haven't. Fuck that. So yeah, let's drink a sip of coffee before we end. I guess I could continue, but I really want to make sure that whatever I say is kind of condensed and the message would be clear enough. So I want to expand more, I'll probably make a video, an episode about spirituality, specifically the dark sides of spirituality that I said and talked about and went through and even uh, for a period of my life spread myself. But I hope this story gives you a bit of a better glimpse into what potentially enlightenment is and that it's not such a big deal as people make it. It's not the end all solution. I think there's better things to, to spend time on and um, to focus on and to yeah, work on. And if you're on that path, I hope that that makes you think and hopefully you direct the same energy or you are investing into becoming enlightened into something more useful, in my opinion. Well, obviously, that's just my opinion, <laughs> you know. But that's why stories are great, and that's why I'm inspired to share stories with you that hopefully my lessons will be valuable to you and you'll learn from my mistakes. And yeah, hopefully you can come to your own conclusions through my story versus me telling you what's right and what's wrong. This is just my opinion and just my experience. So yeah, thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think about the whole thing. And as always, keep questioning.